Hi, I'm Kiwi, uh, CEO of Lions Forge. Today, we're going to do a craft laser walkthrough. Uh, so we're going to do a right to left cycle to go through every single uh, critical components and features of the uh, craft laser. So let's begin with the side panel. So this is the left panel of the craft laser. So this is where our user will spend most of the time using the uh, crop laser in terms of the uh, use, looking for indications, adjusting power, uh, etc. So let's just start off with the uh, watch area. So crop laser have its own radiator. So this is where the air is going to uh, uh, come in to cool the system. So for the setup, uh, within one feet away from the radiator, make sure there is no obstruction and no loose articles. Uh, such as tissue paper or powder, as there's going to be negative pressure uh, uh, pulling the, the ambient air into the system. So if you have loose articles such as uh, tissue paper or powder, you get uh, kind of suck in, and that will significantly reduce the uh, cooling efficiency of the system. So next, we're going to go to the uh, indicator lights. This will generally address um, the health status of the craft laser. So let's just start off with the first one. So the first indicator light is the, the red LED. Uh, that will indicate whether the laser power supply is on or off. Under normal condition, the, the light should turn on and it will go off triggered by the craft laser uh, loading door. So if there is, during a laser cutting operation, if there is an accidental opening of the uh, uh, loading tray door, the red indicator light will go off, meaning that the laser power supply in the system is not receiving any power. So in this case, it's actually a safer, uh, it's a safety architecture that is inbuilt into the craft laser. The second light, uh, which is the amber light, that is actually the firing signal light. Depending on what laser cutting file that is sent to the craft laser, uh, the amber light will come on and off according to the cutting file. Lastly, is the uh, blue LED light. So the blue indicator light is also the water protection light. Uh, that is normally uh, uh, indication of whether there's positive water flow to cool the CO2 laser tube. Uh, under normal operating condition, the blue LED light will come, come on steady blue. Uh, so in the event that the light did not come on, uh, that generally means there are three conditions uh, that happen. Number one is that there is not enough, uh, the water level, the coolant level is low. Two, the water pump is not functioning. Three, there are some sort of obstruction uh, in the uh, uh, water flow. So this will explain uh, on the later part. So next, uh, you can see there is this big red button here. So this is your emergency uh, stop. So to trigger it, just uh, press it down. So this will cut off the power main uh, for the machine. To uh, reset it, uh, just simply rotate clockwise, allows the uh, button to pop up, and that's where you will be in a normal operating uh, mode. Next, we come to the uh, two blue uh, knob here. The, the top one, so this is your uh, focal height adjustment. Uh, so CO2 laser cutter is just like uh, taking a magnifying glass under the sun. Uh, to burn something. Um, so different thickness of material require some sort of uh, adjustment to your optimum focal length. So this is how you adjust the cutter head uh, to achieve the uh, optimum cutter uh, focal length. Next, uh, the bottom knob, this is your power knob. In craft laser, uh, we use uh, analog control. So uh, by turning the knob clockwise, you are actually increasing the uh, laser power intensity. So do follow the manual uh, for our recommended settings for the respective material needed uh, to cut. So next, we come to these two uh, RCA receptacles. For the craft laser, 
uh, we are full metal enclosure system to see what is inside there are actually two independent uh, analog camera uh, that will stream through the two RCA uh, uh, receptacle here so just get your normal RCA cable uh, like this and just insert in and then connect this to your TV or your, to your monitor and then from there you will have a streaming of what is happening inside uh, to change the view, uh, simply take out the RCA and then just insert into the next camera. So they are the top receptacles is the top camera view, uh, which is seeing the overall cutting area this way. Uh, the side camera, uh, which is actually looking uh, more of the uh, uh, more of a safety camera uh, to look at the entire work area from the side view. Uh, so this is to cater for uh, early a recognition of uh, a fire hazard. So next, uh, the, uh, the last part of this panel here is the uh, USB connection point. So uh, Cloudraiser can utilize both direct PC control or through this uh, SD card control. So let's come to the, the uh, aft panel of the craft laser. So the craft laser utilizes a simple uh, single phase uh, PowerPoint. So you can just use your C13 or C14 uh, cable, uh, like so. Uh, insert into the, just make sure that before you insert the power cable, make sure the craft laser is in the off position. Similarly to your main PowerPoint is also in the off position. Uh, make sure you have a secured plug-in on both ends. So insert this in, and then this uh, to your power main. Then turn on. Please do not do the reverse, meaning having both craft laser power on and the main on, and then connect this. So this will induce unnecessary electrical arc uh, that is bad for the machine. So next, we will uh, look at uh, this uh, flip switch here. So this guarded flip switch basically control the internal fan. In the to turn on the craft laser internal exhaust uh, fan, simply just flip the switch on this way. Uh, to turn it off, just do this. Next, let's look at the craft laser uh, water reservoir. So this is where our uh, coolant reservoir which is basically filled with uh, distilled water. The distilled water uh, need to maintain uh, above 50% uh, water level. Uh, every two to three months, do take, uh, do take note of the water level. If it does fall below 50%, simply remove these two small screws from which you can easily release the water reservoir, uh, uncap the water reservoir and then just pour in the distilled water. Uh, do the reverse to install the uh, water reservoir back. Uh, to note, as I mentioned earlier uh, about the water flow light, the blue LED, the, in the event it turns off, uh, as I mentioned, either water level is too low, there's a failure in the water pump, or there's some obstruction. Some of the possible obstruction uh, issue will have been uh, a kink in the silicon water tube. So in this case, I will do a negative demonstration of how a possible condition to have a kink uh, in the silicone water tube. So now you can observe there's a kink. So this is normally caused by the wrong placement uh, position of the water reservoir being too close to the water inlet. Uh, to remedy the situation, simply pull the reservoir away and straighten the silicon water tube as such. Now, lastly, let's just talk about the, uh, the exhaust system. So Quavaser has uh, two exhaust fans uh, as shown. The fumes are being filtered away uh, with our own filter cartridge that comes with the Quavaser. Uh, we'll look something like that. This is our standard 
H13 HIPAA filter uh, together and combination of uh, activated carbon uh, filter. To install the filter cartridge is very simple. Uh, simply follow the arrow where the where point to the where the airflow is going to be. Place it in the black receptacles here. And then just uh, maneuver the uh, Velcro away. All right. So once it's sit in, simply tighten the two Velcro strap as such. Each Velcro strap has about 25 kg holding weight. Just pull tight and tighten and then Velcro over. Okay, do the same for the second one. Pull to tighten and hook over. Well, that's as, as simple as uh, how you install the, uh, our filter cartridge. Uh, at, the end of, at the end of the installation, just give a quick tug to make sure that it's securely fastened uh, to the crowd laser. So this is using the HIPAA filter. Uh, so this will be good for your indoor uh, uh, use. However, if for those who decided that uh, they do not want to uh, utilize uh, the filter system and they just want to use a ducting system, then a crop laser also come with a ducting adapter. So to switch to the ducting adapter, uh, simply just remove the filter. The crop laser does provide a ducting adapter. So this, instead of using the filter, the, our user do have the option to actually duck out the films from the laser cutting. Uh, so this is the ducting adapter. It consists of two parts, the clamp and the actual ducting adapter. So to, start, to install the ducting adapter, the first step is to remove the two bolts located, located uh, behind the, uh, uh, the filter receiver. So simply use a 3mm Allen key, remove the two bolts. So now, what we'll do, we'll just place the ducting adapter onto the filter receiver with the opening facing closer uh, place closer to the wheel uh, side and then we're going to use the ducting adapter clamp which you can see down here there is a L-shaped band a small little uh, edge here insert this onto the boat that is holding the Velcro strap uh, like so so let me move away so we can have a clearer look just insert in between and once it's inserted this form a convenient hinge to allow you to hinge the ducting clamp right over the ducting adapter so once it's hinged over so if you recall the two bolts that we have removed now just place it back so this will fasten the clamp over the uh, ducting adapter. Okay, and we are done. So the, the crop laser ducting adapter will be able to receive a standard uh, 4 inch or 10 cm uh, ducting that you just simply uh, insert and then just put the other end to uh, whichever that you desire. All right, let's come to the wheel panel. So the craft laser uh, wheel panel, there is simply just four wheels, all of which are actually detachable. Uh, each wheel does 
take out, took out about 7 cm or 3 inch of space. By removing them, uh, that in a way gives you a bit more room uh, to kind of place uh, where you want to place your crop laser. To insert back, simply just park it back. As you can see. Now we come to the front panel. The crop laser uh, is it's a unique system. It offers, instead of a top, the traditional top loading system, it provides a tray loading system. Uh, to load the material, simply open the tray. So I want you to pay uh, close attention. Uh, the, the tray door uh, is generally quite a tight fit, so you need to use both hands. So simply put your hand uh, beneath, there's a uh, finger holes or slots that you can position your finger and then use the thumb to push against uh, the top, like so, to open the tray. Try to do this in a parallel manner. So the crowd laser tray loading system or the front loading system uh, has two key advantages. Um, the first bin is compact. Uh, so Compared to the normal top loading laser cutter, craft laser can be placed underneath the table, in the shelf, or even place multiple craft laser on top of each other. So uh, that is the advantage of having the tray loading system. The second advantage of the tray loading system is that from the fire drill or safety perspective, it's actually safer. Uh, why do I say so? So imagine you are having a top-loading laser cutter. If there is a fire, uh, what will be your fire drill? So you have to open up the, the, uh, the laser cutter door, uh, and then you are now being exposed to the mechanical parts, the high voltage, the laser, and not to mention the fire, uh, and then try to deal with the fire inc uh, incident. So basically, is uh, in a nutshell, is uh, fairly dangerous. Um, for, for anybody. So in the quad laser case, if there is a fire, all you need to do is simply open the tray. Uh, don't worry about the tray falling out. There are, this is about the maximum position the quad laser tray door uh, can open. There are two mechanical stopper the, to prevent this from uh, falling out. So just pull open the tray and then you just need to deal with the incident material. Uh, again, the craft laser tray door is a mechanical door. There is no electrical part or sensitive electronics. By opening the tray door, uh, remember the laser power supply will be cut off, so there's no danger of uh, uh, any laser hazard. And then just deal with the incident material directly. So you're already separated from the machine, so there is, um, it's just a mechanical tray with a fire that is happening, right? So uh, don't worry about using pouring water uh, onto the tray. Uh, the machine, the tray door, the, the cutting tray is actually canted five to 10 degree uh, downwards. So any water that is spilled uh, on top of the tray will simply be drained away uh, through the drain hole that's located right beneath here. All right? Next, uh, the last part of all this uh, physical walk around. So this is the LCD. So uh, this is where the uh, some of the cool function in terms of speed adjustment, uh, inserting of your cutting file uh, through the SD card uh, is going to take place. Uh, so there are two ways to control the craft laser. One is by uh, the LCD, right, through the SD card, or you can actually use the USB connected to your PC. Right? The setup for the PC will be addressed in the next video. Alright, that's all.